Hey, everybody, this is Mike with One Stop Co-op Shop, and I just got back from PAX Unplugged, a great weekend of convention going. And I'm really tired, and I have work in just a few hours, but I wanted to uh, quickly go through, like I did last year, the games that I played and uh, also the upcoming games I'm most excited to play. So this will be short and sweet, but if you want to hear more details, we're recording on the streaming channel a podcast with uh, Peter, Jerry, and I talking about uh, these games and more in greater detail. So you can join the stream tonight again on the streaming channel and ask questions or just listen to the podcast uh, posting this Sunday. So first, I'm going to go through the top five games that I didn't actually get to play, either because I didn't have the chance or because they aren't ready for play yet. Some of these are out, available, or I already have a review copy. Other ones are just a gleam in their eye. So first, number five is Kapow from Wise Wizards. This is one that I saw a prototype of last year, and now they gave me a review copy of the final game. This is a 1v1 or 2v2 battler. You know how much I enjoy those with uh, kind of hidden dice selection and assigning to abilities and very unique characters. And what I'll be covering on the channel soon, and what I'm most excited to play, is the solo and co-op mode. For co-op, you need uh, both of the sets of the game. Solo, you just need one. And it looks like the AI works in a really straightforward way, but still keeps it unique for each player. You're basically just rolling dice and assigning them in kind of this vertical uh, priority order. But that's Kapow, coming to the channel soon. Excited to play that. My number four game, I also got a review copy of. This one's called The Light in the Mist, so I'll probably do a review of this one soon. And you all might know if you watch Sunday's video on mystery games, but I really like mystery and escape room games. And this one is one where you're kind of like choosing using what order you want to tackle the mystery, but everything's handled through tarot cards with like really beautiful illustrations. And then also like this little like narrative book that goes with it. And I'll be honest, I asked for a review copy of this one partially because my wife loves tarot cards and I think she'll really enjoy playing this, but I'm excited to see kind of how the art and the story and the puzzle all go together. My number three of games I didn't get to play is the latest uh, upcoming set for Maximum Apocalypse, Wasted Wilds. This already crowdfunded and I believe is delivering early next year. And I had some things I really enjoyed about Maximum Apocalypse and some things I didn't back when I originally played it, but I only played the original set and looking at uh, all the things the expansions have added, the new modes of play, and especially the Legendary Edition and now Wasted Wilds, it looks like uh, a lot of the things that I didn't enjoy about the game have been ironed out or eliminated completely while still uh, emphasizing the like great unique characters and attention and the variety in play. So I would love to, uh, hopefully I'll get a review copy of this one, I would love to play the newest set, which is a standalone, and uh, see how great things have grown over the years. The number two game I'm most excited to play, and this one is the furthest out, so I know the least. Uh, here's an awkward picture I took when I met with Check Games Edition. But this is an upcoming new expansion for Lost Runes of Arnak. It's going to add more leaders, like in the first expansion, the Expedition Leaders, which I really enjoyed. It's going to add more cards, more stuff, but what I'm most excited about is it's adding a co-op mode. No idea, no details whatsoever on how it's going to work, <laughs> but uh, I really like Lost Runes of Arnak and Peter and some other people from my gaming group do as well. So the idea of being able to play like either one-offs or a campaign like the solo campaign from the app in co-op mode, if that's how it works out, I'm uh, super excited about that possibility. But that one's so far away that it couldn't beat out the number one game I'm most anticipating playing, and that is Clank Catacombs. I got to see this one in play a few times at the convention, and again, I'm hoping they'll send me a review copy so I can feature it on the channel. I've always generally enjoyed Clank. I liked uh, Clank in space better than the original Clank, but I've heard from multiple people that this newest one is by far the best. It's got uh, dungeons that are different each time and that you kind of control how they come out and like rotate the tiles to fit the, the way you want to orient things. And apparently it's a little bit easier to escape the dungeon at the end so you don't have that frustration as much. And I've also heard that the new solo mode is the best of the bunch. I've always enjoyed the solo okay, but apparently uh, the Clank Catacomb solo is the best of all of them. So I always like Clank, I always like deck builders. So this is my number one one game that I saw at PAX but didn't get to play that I am hoping to play soon. Uh, again, if they can send me a copy or I can find one to buy once it's fully available. But jumping to games that I actually played and where I know a few more things, uh, first at number five is Pocket Paragons. This game's been out for a while apparently, but I'd never heard of it. It is a 1v1 dueling, a brawling game that takes like three to five minutes to play. It is lightning fast. And you all probably know if you've seen my Exceed or Battlecon or Sakura Arms solo modes that I love uh, battling games. And this one clearly is not as deep as the others. It's more like kind of paper, rock, scissors style, but it's so fast and the characters are still unique. So that's great. And it seems very cheap. They just gave me two characters for free. Like they were giving them to everybody who sat down at the table. But while I enjoyed what I played of the 1v1 mode, the thing that's got me the most excited is that apparently they had like a sort of release of a solo expansion. And now it's going to become part of some of the main core releases next year. So you know me, I love designing and I love playing solo variants for brawling games. So I give them to the table more often and try out different characters. So Pocket Paragons being so fast, if the solo is good, I'm very excited. So I didn't play the solo. I guess that part's still unplayed for me. But I like the 1v1 play enough that I want to check it out. 
Number four of the convention, uh, one that I imagine I'll be doing a video of pretty soon, was Starship Captains from Check Games Edition. And they did give me a review copy of this one to take home, just to be transparent. Now, I've only played this one multiplayer so far, and I'm going to be featuring the solo mode on the channel, so I'm not sure if that's good. But this was a really quick, uh, fun, beautifully illustrated, uh, light to mid, I'd, I'd say more on the light end, Euro. Is the Star Trek theme as vibrant in the game as I wish it was? No, but the art is amazing. The components are really nice. And I at least enjoyed, really enjoyed what I was doing. The game almost feels too fast. I think for solo, it's probably going to be like a 30 minute game. And even for a four player multiplayer game, it was like maybe an hour. But yeah, my first multiplayer game was really enjoyable. So I'm hoping uh, the rest, the up the bar, the solo is really good too. Third on my list, not really new to the channel, but I haven't covered this particular set before, and that was Super Skill Pinball Ramp Up. Now, this is not the Super Skill Pinball set I would have been most excited to play. That probably would have been the Christmas uh, movie one or the Star Trek one. But I got to play one of the tables in a multiplayer game, and I did forget that the downtime for this one could be a little bit bad. Uh, we had some people who were sitting for like five or ten minutes while somebody else finished out their table. But for solo play, I totally forgot how awesome this game can be. I forgot how amazingly they kind of uh, model pinball mechanics with the uh roll and write system. And I'm very excited to play out the rest of the tables. I only played the most basic one, but that was still pretty exciting and very different from the uh, Super Skill Pinball original set. So yeah, ramp it up. Uh, excited to do more. I'll probably do a video on the channel. Just a quick one. Won't take very long to uh, show the game in action. And they did give me a review copy of that one as well. I want to make sure that's clear. Next, this one's not going to be too surprising because people know I love this game, but I did get a chance to play with Liz Davidson, uh, just like the first time I played this game, Final Girl uh, Season 2. And this is one that I backed all in myself, uh, all the sets, but specifically I got to play the alien one against the alien uh, boss, the Evomorph. And it was a friggin' blast. Now, of course, just playing with uh, Liz and uh, Evan was there uh, helping us through the game. So that made it kind of awesome regardless. But uh, yeah, the theme of like how they did sort of like the Sulaco style like ship you were walking around on was great. The Evomorph evolved and became like bigger and then had like the stealth mechanic where it would disappear from the board sometimes. And we finished it off. It was amazing by luring it with the cat, basically the Jonesy, if you know alien. <laughs> We used the cat to lure it into the airlock and then airlocked it and the kid, the dead body of the cat <laughs> out of the spaceship. So we were kind of horrible people, but we won the day. Yes, we did. So it was awesome. And uh, AJ and Evan did give me uh, permission to take one of the early uh, ones that they, I guess, got airlifted uh, of the, the Thing themed one. So like at the ice station, I love the Thing as a movie. So I'm going to be doing a video of that probably in uh, January once the actual orders are closer to shipping. And then since since it's an extra one and I ordered the entire game myself, uh, I'll be doing a giveaway of the Ice Station set. So be on the lookout for that in the next month or two. What could beat out Final Girl? Well, this is a game that I actually had a review copy of uh, sitting at my house because it arrived the day I left for the con. But I got the chance to play it once at the convention. And when I got home, I enjoyed it so much, I immediately played it with my son. And this is Heat Pedal to the Metal, which is a, a new racing game from Days of Wonder. And yeah, I'll be fast tracking my coverage of this one because I want to get it in my top of 2022 list because I am just having such a a great time with it. Now, I will say I haven't played solo yet. I haven't uh, used the AI cars yet, so I can't say for sure if I love that system, but I expect I will. But the competitive play, even, even in a 1v1 match against my son with like the board being very empty, it was still a blast to play the game. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised about that because I didn't love Flame Rouge or Flamme Rouge by the same designer, which uses somewhat similar movement systems. But yeah, this one might be battling Rallyman for my top racing game of all time. So once I play more and do my uh, playthrough and review, <laughs> you'll find out. But uh, for now, it was my number one game that I played at the convention. So there you go. Keeping that video short and sweet. But again, if you want to hear a ton about these games and other games I didn't play that uh, Peter and Jerry saw and hear about our experiences playing all of them, it is going into a ton more depth. If you want to ask questions, uh, join the stream tonight on the streaming channel or uh, listen to the podcast on Sunday. You can hear all about it. Good gaming, everyone. And I'll see you at the next stop.